give credit to PEs who I think frankly are doing so much more for their patients than uh, in our local surgeries than happened 20, 30 years ago, mainly because of technology changes, but also a recognition that by doing more in primary <coughs> care that we can prevent people going to hospital in the first place. I think that's an admirable um, change. And so I want to praise them as well as express, agree with him, my concern that by rescinding responsibility for that 24-hour care, uh, in my view, was a step back for patients. And certainly in the general election um, on, uh, in 2010, that was one of the big issues raised with me uh, on the doorstep about that lack, lack of out-of-hours care. I agree. Um, moving on, um, on to uh, some of the different formulas, as what was um, one of the big changes in the Health and Social Care Act was to split the funding for the NHS and for um, from uh, public health going to uh, going to um, sorry public health going to local authorities and recognising the deprivations inherent in different parts of the population. I think that was the right thing to do. We ended up with a situation where, quite rightly, uh, in Surrey, it ended up with £20 per head for public health allocations, and then you go to places like Hackney with £115. Um, there are other places like Westminster have even higher, recognising that parts of the borough are particularly uh, have significant deprivation. But that was the right thing to do. And it passed to uh, local authorities, not only the staff from NHS, uh, the NHS trusts, who focusing on public health campaigns and similar to that, but also tackling the long-term factors that contribute to health inequalities. So whether that's quality of housing, local employment, and frankly, the NHS was not in a position to dramatically change the levers of that in their local communities. It is right that the councils took on that leadership. And I hope and pray that they continue to take that rather than just taking what was there before of just uh, public health programmes. It is a real step change in the responsibility and the opportunity to make a difference for our local councillors, and that needs to be grasped. Uh, meanwhile, um, the uh, opportunity was there then with the rest of the NHS budget to look at the formula, and I refer to uh, Health and Social, uh, the Act, Part 1, Section 23, SS 13G, and this reads, as, um, as a consequence of what needs to happen with the formula, is that uh, to reduce inequalities, the board must, in the exercise of its functions, have regard to the need to reduce inequalities between patients for with respect to their ability to access health services and reduce inequalities between patients with respect to the outcomes achieved for them by the provision of health services. Now, that is twofold, uh, Sir Edward, and I believe that in this latest funding formula, there hasn't really been taken any account of the access to, of the ability to access health services, um, but indeed there has been um, a strengthening in inequalities. Yeah. I thank the member for giving way that later also for securing this debate. I think the issue though is not the formula that was developed by ACRA. The issue is that on November the 13th, as she rightly says, the board of the NHS decided not to implement the formula that was developed by ACRA. That's what's inexplicable and that's the result that we are living with now. I agree with my friend on that. Um, I was about to refer to the formula. Funny enough, I don't think the formula went strongly enough um, in terms of reflecting the demands on age. I think it could have gone a lot further. It also, and this is a constant issue for those of us who represent rural seats, about the sparsity challenges. Um, there is no doubt that a patient's experience of the healthcare is somewhat diminished when you are traveling, you're doing 200 mile round trips to go for checkups on your cardiac services. Now, I know that we cannot have um, a cardiac hospital within five miles or 10 miles of everybody here. That might be the case in London, different case perhaps, uh, but I'm not going to get into the London health funding debate. Um, but there's no doubt that that is not helpful, in my view, towards the, health, uh, towards the experience that patients have. And indeed, as I believe that the funding formula or the outcomes of it have had um, negative consequences in a ra more rapid reconfiguration and regionalisation of services, partly for patient quality, but also because of the funding challenges that are faced. And that is particularly acute, in my view, where there is a high proportion of elderly patients. And frankly, I don't think that is good enough. So I will come on to exactly what my friend says uh, uh, now um, about aspects of the board. Yes, of course. Paul, for my honourable friend, for giving way, making such a powerful case for um, patient care in rural communities, which I wholeheartedly agree with. But will she also agree with me? those rural communities where 
there are poorer parts of the country where the average incomes are much lower. There is also the negative impact of the market forces factor because obviously people within the National Health Service and the care system are often paid national wages, but the funding formula discounts for local wages. Ms. Coffey. I haven't, um, I, I think that's an interesting point made by my honourable friend. I haven't gone into that level of detail or don't have that level of understanding, but I think she makes an important contribution to the debate on that particular challenge. Um, I know it's something that uh, local uh, CCGs have to contend with, and indeed our local um, NHS trusts, um, and I think it's for them to make that point clearly to uh, the board of NHS England. Uh, coming back to the formula, I've already, uh, in response to my honourable friend from Warrington South, suggested uh, that I, there, is, there may have been a slight increased focus on age, but it didn't go far enough. And the correlation between age and capita funding only mar increased marginally between the old formula and this, and this uh, current formula that has been partially adopted. Um, South Sefton, 40% more per capita than East, Ipswich and East Suffolk, but it has 50,000 fewer pe pe pensioners and a lower proportion of the pensioners. And yet, I know that uh, my life expectancy in uh, my part of Suffolk is considerably higher than other parts. That is good, uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that those people, uh, certainly particularly elderly, do not have, a need, have complex health needs which need to be addressed. And at the moment, I'm afraid that the formula continues to discriminate against elderly, and I would say, sir, that it discriminates even further against people in rural areas. Sure. on it. Uh, the issue here is not the formula. Indeed, it doesn't really matter what the formula comes up with because NHS England will not implement a formula which does not give everybody an inflation pay rise. That's what happened. And so, with all due respect, we can make the formula anything we like. If it's not going to be implemented, it just doesn't matter. Well, I can understand why the board of NHS England made a decision that would not cut per patient funding in different parts of the country. Now, we could get into politics about um, the different aspects of uh, what happened in previous governments where overall funding went up, but we know in parts of the country, I'm sure places like I represent, did not get the same increases or indeed seem to suffer as a consequence of that, and yet the overall envelope went up. Now, I'm not into playing party politics with NHS funding or indeed public funding. So I recognise exactly what he says. And this is what uh, led to the outcry, I guess, in the autumn about um, Tory run NHS cutting funds to Labour uh, northern seats. It was frankly disgraceful because this was the independent uh, assessment of the ACRA. Um, and that was there, but I recognise that that has to be managed. Nevertheless, I do think the, N the NHS board bottled it by not being prepared to be a little braver in how it decided the allocations. It also ignored the formula, um, and there's a consequence when I'm referring to the ageing population. It effectively decreased uh, the recommendation on, uh, on what proportion would go to elderly patients. And I think that was wrong in principle, but I recognise what you're saying, that my honourable friend is saying. Um, and there were various uh, proposals that we put forward, a suggestion that perhaps, um, I'm saying this as a constituency MP, not as a, a, a minister, or, or sorry, not as a representative of the Conservative Party, but trying to put across some suggestions uh, that could have seen an improvement in the pace of change towards getting a fairer funding formula, while still not cutting funds to patients in different parts of the country. I think uh, uh, I regret the final decision that the Board of NHS England made. I think they should have, of the two options on proposal that they were put forward, I would have hoped they'd have gone for the first, recognising it was a unique opportunity to tackle this unfairness. And, 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 and as I said earlier, I think they bottled it. Um, can I just um, get into uh, some of the issues that I wanted to raise about why this matters. And if I refer, I am going to refer to my own constituency, uh, Sir Edward, and that's uh, Suffolk Coastal. And I have four community hospitals there. I have Felixstowe, Alvra, Southwold, and the Patrickstead in Halesworth. The first three have all been highly commended by the CQC, and that is, they are well recognised and well loved in the local communities. I think Patrickstead in Halesworth also does an excellent job. It had a slight criticism in the CQC, but true to form, they addressed it straight away, and now they're back on, on doing good things. 
So when I first got elected,